guy came out shooting. Boom, boom, boom. I feel some hot on my side. I got a hole in my shirt. I'm bleeding like, what the? F so I get grazed by this bullet. I run in the house. I'm like, yeah, oh, I'm God, I got hit, I got hit. There was a black cop with blue contacts, bro. There was this, this dude was darker than me, had blue contacts. And every time he saw me, I I, 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 I could be doing nothing, bro. Like I, I, you know, I lived three doors away from the corner. So, yeah, and there's a, there was a corner store. So I'll, you know, this dude would pull up and uh, this dude pulled around and said, get, get the f off the corner. Next time I see you, I'm gonna put my foot in your House in West Philadelphia, I didn't realize that we were living in an abandoned house until I got older. And I ran into somebody that I grew up with and she was like, yo, you guys, were, did you know that house was abandoned? I was, I was like freaking eight or nine years old. I had no clue. So no, I didn't know. Like I got robbed in broad daylight. This dude, I, this gun looked big as hell. My neighborhood, in dude. It, 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 I don't know. I don't know where this dude was from, but I knew something was going on. Yo, broad daylight. I don't know. This gun looked big, man. It like this dude had a 45 revolver or something. Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle. He's J-Dub Justin Richardson. On the show today, we have the one and only Keon Smith. He's a friend of mine from work. I'll tell you, this guy has been all over the place. He has a great story. Uh, we touched on a bunch of things. He did some acting. Uh, he's done, He's you know, he's done, let's say, he worked in pharmaceuticals. But his story is an inspiring one. He is an entrepreneur, and he's a uh, he works for a charity called Officially Made. We'll have a link in the description of this episode. And I mean, I can't speak enough about this guy. Officially Made, fantastic charity. Everyone should support. We'll have the link in this episode to do so. And his story of literally coming from the bottom to where he is now it's an inspirational tale that you know i think everyone can relate to and the way he tells it it's very enjoyable i really enjoyed this episode justin your thoughts i'm head over heels i have a band-aid yeah. on my uh forehead as you'll see i flipped over a wheelbarrow so excited to have him here he's a good old time and you'll enjoy the episode some of the things, the stories he was telling and, and like the situations that happened with him and his family, it's wild, you know, what he had to deal with, especially as a young man, but, the, you know, that he persevered to get him where he is today. And honestly, we got through a lot of stuff and there's still a lot more. So hopefully yeah, we'll still even, tumble. You know, we got about to 19 years old, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So we still, we went through a lot and it was a lot of fun, but I can't wait to have him back. So uh, without any further ado. This is the Work in Perspectives podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle. He's J Dub Justin Richardson, and our guest today is the one and only Keon Smith. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to the Working Perspectives podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle, coming today by Jalen Dub Justin Richardson on the show today. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you a little bit about our guest. You might recognize him from such hits as. Sucker for Love, The Journey of Herman Stone, Color, Underground King, Myra's Angels, One Night at Dante's, Creed, Swing, and Heart of the Beast. You might also recognize him from serving his community from Officially Made, which will have links in the description of this episode for the website and for the Instagram of Officially Made and how you can support that charity. And you might also recognize him from just being a good dude. He also has an Instagram keys to the game for his boxing channel. And honestly, dude, I'll tell you, it's rare to meet someone like this, and I'm super excited we can finally get him on the show. Let me introduce the one and only Keon Smith. Keon, how are you, Oh, man, that was an awesome intro, man. I got to get you to do that all the time when, when I got somewhere to go. So, but uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate you having me, Matt, and uh, hey, Justin man. as well. Pleasure to have you, buddy. Pleasure to have you. It's good to I'll tell you. you walk in the restaurant. You're like, ladies and gentlemen, miss. Exactly. <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to have to pay him to do that. <laughs> hey, I do it for free for you, pal. You know that. But, uh. <laughs> The so, reigning, Justin. defending. <laughs> <laughs> so Keon here, Justin, is uh, he's one of those where he's a safe to work with guy. 
You know what I mean? He's like, say you're safe to be a human with this guy at work. You know, you can and hear you your grievances it. openly without qualms, there or you, you can just talk like a normal person. You know <laughs> what I mean? And you don't have to talk like in office, you know, office vernacular. You can just talk normal and joke and tell funny stories without exactly. having, you know, without having to hear I'm going to go to HR. You know what I mean? <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Even though Keon has reported me to HR three times, but it was for separate ordeals. <laughs> That's you know? physical stuff, not talking stuff. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. yeah, obviously. It's for sling and blow. Okay, that's something he just doesn't tolerate. Just kidding. <laughs> um, but either way, so Keon's on the show today. And Keon, we start off the show by asking you what are called the disputed questions. Now, the deal with the disputed questions is thus, is uh, that I'm going to ask you some questions, right? And I have my answers to this, which are usually pretty much always correct, and they are correct. And then Justin <laughs> has his answers, which are wrong, and you're a terrible person if you agree with Justin, just so you know. <laughs> That's prerequisite. So, so no, first no, no question, neutral ground, huh? No, it's either or. You're gonna die on this hill. <laughs> all right. Let's go. Um, yep. First question is: What movie do you think is better, Godfather Part One or Godfather Part Two? Part Two. <laughs> That's how you started off, Jada. That's how you started off, baby. I think last week was the first part time two. we had somebody say Part One, but then he started describing Part Two. He was yeah. like, oh. yeah, you know, Robert De Niro's in it. And it's really good. And I was like. <laughs> I had part one, but uh, he literally God, said he was like, first. Yeah, he's like, part one, you know, Robert De Niro's in it, and they do the they origin show how story he called, of him yeah, back they, in Italy. And I was like, oh, like, no, that's part two. <laughs> part two. Yeah. 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 No, part two is so good. Honestly, to be fair, the saga, have you not seen the saga? The, the saga is where they do it, it's everything in chronological order as one, yeah, which is like, really good. Take all the scenes and put them in chronological yeah. order. So it yeah, starts with De Niro, and then yeah. yeah. I've, so you I don't get I've, the horse in the bed until like halfway. You know? I think I've only oh, seen that on. Uh, I think they used to air it on like TNT back yeah. in the day, and it was like yeah. five and a half hours. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things where they're like, all right, there's no sports, and yeah. it's you know Christmas is coming up. It's one of those things, you know. But yeah. dude, I mean, I mean, I miss channel surfing sometimes. You know, I miss a good channel mm-hmm. surf, but I can't tell you the last time I've done it. I'll tell you. My in-laws love it. Still it's doing nice it. when TV picks what to uh, put on. Because that is the difference between, like, if you like a show like like Seinfeld, like, if you're flipping mm-hmm. through the TV and it's, you know, episode, you know, season six, episode 13, you're just like, all right, I'm, I'm watching because it's on TV. I would never yeah. go to Netflix and select that particular episode. So you have that benefit of I'll like, tell you, picking the episode for you. You know what's wild now is how important like a thumbnail or a promo poster is. You know what I mean? Because there are shows mm-hmm. out there. That like it genuinely took me like 10 times seeing the thumbnail or the promo poster to be like, all right, I'll give this a shot and like really enjoying it, you know, Mm -hmm. as opposed to like if I was sucked in by the promo poster and thumbnail at first, I would have been hooked right away, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like certain shows. Emotion definitely matters. Dude, totally. You would know about that movie star, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, we've all seen the pro- poster for Suckers in Love. <laughs> Where's yeah, it? Man. Suckers for Love. Decent. Sucker for Love, yeah. Sucker that was with, uh, you're familiar with the guy that, uh, the comedian, um, Spank Horton, William Spank Horton, runs with uh, Kevin Hart, tall, dark skinned guy. Oh, he was- yeah. He kind of looks like Bernie Mac a little bit. Yep, yep. He, uh, yeah. you, know, you know, Kevin Hart has this group of guys he called the Plastic Cup Boys. Yeah. That he's that he's bring, that he's bringing up under his umbrella, and he's uh, and that guy uh, Spank Horton is one of them. So uh, yeah, he was the lead in that. So um, I had a I had a role in that film. I was also the uh, associate producer on it. Nice. Oh, nice, dude! Hell yeah, yeah. bro! Yeah. What kind of money you got on the side? I mean, I know <laughs> I know where you work, bro. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we work in the same place, and I'm not producing no movies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but okay, so let's keep it moving. Then, what do you like better, uh, Cheetos, crunchy or puff? Crunchy, man, it's easy. Yeah, puff is right. for, for girls, man. Yeah, it's a, it's for wimps. For wimps, <laughs> it's not for wimps. Cheese balls literally, are delicious. Literally today. I had a girl, I, someone, you know, you might not know this, Justin, but we, we have snacks at my office and I'm the snack guy, you know, like if our, if our office, uh, no big deal. If our office was Shawshank, I'd be Morgan Freeman, which, you know, pretty good deal. Yeah, but either way, this girl, Corinne, 
who's uh you know kind of a PIA came up to me and she asked if she if I could help her get snacks and I asked do you drag crunchy or puffed and she said puffed and I was like well it's understandable because you're a woman and you're a wimp and wimps <laughs> like puffed so there you go so there you go Justin hope you're happy really even though last week we did get a puffed so there's that <laughs> but uh let's keep it on moving uh keep it on moving down the road who do you like better Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle Chappelle Chappelle's gotta batting go. a thousand on that one got to go Chappelle man okay Minus the Will Smith incident. Are you still going Chappelle? Still going Chappelle. Okay. That's, All the, right. that's yeah. the normal one. Oh, yeah. Got, Who do you like, like better? Okay, go Chris ahead. Chris Rock, ahead. Is, he's, he's cool, man. He's good. But uh, Chappelle, he's, he, he has, uh, I, feel like, I feel like he has a little more in his arsenal. He, he gives you more yeah. than just... You know, yeah. the stand up. He's, he can do, he, he does, he does the skits, movies too, man. The so, he got the skits. Yeah, he, exactly. Yep. Uh, have yep. we not right. seen Grown Ups 3? Chris Rock was incredible. All right. <laughs> Yeah, so. yeah, he's he's, no, he's Chris, good, man. But well, have you seen uh, Chris Rock? Also, did he did Fargo a season in Fargo as well? I did not which see was that. Good. It was good. It was, was good. good. It was a I tough. See it. it was a it was a rough season because they the whoever did the casting missed on the casting a little bit. I think hmm. because they they set it in a really cool era. It was supposed to be in like the nineteen fifties. And mm -hmm. the one of the main Italian mobsters who was supposed to be like this, you know, sadistic killer was played by Jason Schwartzman, you know. So it's mm -hmm. tough to be like this Italian tough guy mobster is Jason Schwartzman here, you know, like, I don't know. I just, you know, it's like it was tough to buy. It's a royal yeah. but, casting, casting is important, man. Casting is definitely important. Yeah, so speaking know, of, speaking of so. roles, you know, speaking of roles, you know, don't forget uh, Chris Rock's iconic role is Pookie, man. New Jack City. <laughs> dude just gonna say that was a good one or he was also great in pootie tang don't forget pootie tang pootie tang dude. you, you know um uh, you know chris rock beat out marlon wayans for that role of uh of uh pookie in new yeah. jack yeah really <laughs> yeah Damn. i could see marlon doing a good job too uh-huh oh you know what <clears throat> no i think i got my my roles mixed up remember he did um i'm gonna get you sucker too yeah yeah he did, i'm gonna he get was... you sucker yeah. But anyway, where you put off the white cast, one, and... one rib exactly. Yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was that one. Let me get one rib. Uh, said, damn, wait, he said, what the hell? He said one drink. <laughs> he said, "Well, fuck the cup, pour it in my hand for a dime." <laughs> <laughs> who do you, who oh, do you like man. better, uh, Bill Murray or Chevy Chase? I gotta go, Bill Murray. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you yeah. do. Because that's the right answer. Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, nice. Gotta go. I'm not gonna lie. Speaking, I know we just went over it, but speaking of Pootie Tang, I I loved that movie, and I used to tie, tippy tie, dude. Wasada tay, tippy tie on the runny kind. Louis C.K. is one of the writers for that. Pootie Tang. Louis C.K. wrote Pootie Tang. Don't quote me on that, but I think. Okay, I won't quote you. Let's keep it moving then. Uh, do you game? Keon. Say it again. You game? Are you a gamer? Uh nah, man. I'm, I just play. I'm just playing sports games, man. You know, 2K, yeah. Madden, boxing, Xbox sure. or PlayStation. Yeah. If you had to pick. Um, one. Xbox. Okay. So can I say this without sounding like a jerk? Can I? Can I? I mean, I'd like to think when it comes to the video game consoles, I feel like black people like PlayStation more. Am I wrong to say that? No, you're not. Because my son I has feel a like, PlayStation. Why my do you feel has... like that's a thing? Right? Yeah. Is it? I, I, does he have a PlayStation or Xbox? <laughs> Shit, I can't. I think he well, has I an know. Xbox. I just, yeah, I think my son just, has an Xbox. I just feel like all my black friends always had PlayStation. You know? Yeah, I don't I know. Know. 2001 oh, yeah. Pootie yeah. Tang, directed by Louis C.K. Shut Louis the C. front door! Directed by, yeah. Dude! Yeah. Makes it even better. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's keep it moving then. Keep it on moving down the road. Uh, when it comes to a theme park, or an amusement park or a water park guy. I'm not a water park guy. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go with the amusement park, man. Damn right, damn right, yeah. Daddy O. Yeah, man. Don't jinx it, Justin. You turkey only, farming only, son of a gun. Only, only women like to walk around wet, man. <laughs> yeah. And again, Justin, you're a woman. <laughs> a woman you like twice. puff Cheetos and you <laughs> like, like puff Cheetos and like wet. water parks, yo. <laughs> You're a big old hairy woman, but you are. Uh... I'll walk around a water park with Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'll leave a little trail with Cheeto puffs. around. Man. Oh, man. I think it might be All a right. science to it. I think it might be a science to his madness, though. <laughs> yeah. 
leave a little breadcrumb trail. Yeah. Think, a little think, about around, trail. think about think about the water park. <laughs> I think about it. I went to I one think, over the I think summer. Justin is on, I think he's on to something. I lure them in with the puffy Cheetos. Oh. <laughs> if you think if you did free Cheeto puffs at a water park, it'd just be all women. You know what I mean? If they dissolve <laughs> in the chlorine, it is a an uphill Ooh. battle. Oh my god! That, even thinking about the stuff floating around that wave pool, all the Cheeto puffs dissolve like cotton candy in the pool. Have you guys seen these Orbeez things? You know the deal with this, the Orbeez. No, I don't know. The it's from like the 90s? no, the Orbeez are like these little balls that if you put them in water, they expand. And like they're like they're the, they're like the new paintballs now that kids use. Oh, they use them for the. <clears throat> the the guns you can shoot. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Dude, those things are you wild. Have one? If no, the, all the kids in my neighborhood have them. But I if I won't, dude, I'm not gonna lie. The guns that they're making now, the toy guns, bro. If dude, they were all black, guns are so cool. Oh, airsoft guns are crazy. Yeah, dude. If yeah, they were all black, too. everyone would be like, drop the gun. You know what I mean? Like they oh, look yeah. I mean, so it's... real. We've yeah, been doing that since the the seventies. Like it's you know, guns got to look real to be cool. But those airsoft guns, they use like real clips and everything. Yeah. They have like full blown triggers. Those uh, orb guns, they're automatic. Yeah, same, and they're all battery charge. Like they're all rechargeable yeah. by battery. Have you seen yeah. that gun where you uh you stick the nozzle in the water and it'll yeah <laughs> suck yeah. it up and then it like yeah. it has like a halo like reading gauge to tell you how much yeah. ammo you have left. It'll be pew 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 pew. Yeah, it looks like a laser gun. Yeah, awesome. it's wild. Yeah, yeah, gun, dude. I mean, if you look back at the Nerf guns and the Super Soakers we were dealing with, they were like 10 shots from falling apart. You know what I mean? Now, these <laughs> ones, like, you could take over a small country with. <laughs> I the mean, Super at least Ohio. The best though, man. Dude, I legit was in the... I was in Walmart yesterday, and I was looking at... Because I, I accidentally broke one of the kids in my neighborhood's Orbeez <laughs> gun, <laughs> and I got to buy him, like, a new piece. I felt bad. I was like, he's a nice kid, and I stepped yeah, on his gun. And, switch, like, yeah. Well, I yeah. stepped on the gun and his uh, the, uh, the scope that came... The <laughs> legit scope that came on the oh, gun. Man. It was like a laser-sighted scope, and I stepped on it, and it broke a little bit, and I was like, ah, shit, I gotta buy this kid a new one. <laughs> but either way, I was in Walmart looking for him, and some of the Nerf guns, like, there was a Nerf sniper rifle that I was like, I was like, this is madness. Have you seen that? The That's new crazy. Nerf has, like, the, they're like, like golf ball balls. Balls, yeah. Like they have, like, yeah. divots, kind of like a golf ball, and they... Dude, and they like Dude. like Nerf pellets used to grow out pretty fast. These balls are humming. Like yeah, you're putting holes that. in drywall with this stuff. They're moving. That's crazy. They're moving, babe. That's crazy. Yeah. Dude, I got one for my godson, That's and it really? was like. Yeah, and he shot me with it, and I was like, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> that's, that's, no, that's no orange dart with a rubber tip. Yeah, I was like, well, what's going on right? here, guys? This thing's supposed to flop yeah. out like, you know? But, yeah, man. But either way, all right, Keon, next question, yeah. probably the most important question you'll ever be asked. All right. When it comes to eating wings, are you a drum or are you a flat? Drums. Damn right, he's a drum. There it is, yo. Got to go drums. That's your Justin. boy, Matt. Flats, Justin, I hope you're flats, happy. Listen. Let, let me explain the science. The Please. flats are, are too difficult. They got two bones. The the drum yeah. got one. You just, you just, you just, and throw it in trash, man. You just throw it in trash, man. Pull them apart. Say, I ain't gotta pull nothing apart. Let, let me, let me ask you, Justin. Justin, <laughs> let me ask you this. You get a text message that's life or death while you're eating your 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 flat with your flat with your two bones. What are you gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do with the drum? I'm gonna be like, oh, saved, world saved, done. Exactly. Done. I still got a free hand with the drum, bro. I still got a free <laughs> hand. And I can dip and flip and turn and dip and- Exactly. Do it all with the drum. You don't yeah, need it for man. the rest of the show. You agree with One everything hand. with Matt. Crazy. Yeah. You agree, have dude? fun. I'm gonna go. Not gonna lie, you're like the you're the second person in a month that's that's had a clean sweep with me. Is just it? Just saying. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. crazy. Yeah, remember? Really? Yeah, Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Peters. Oh, that's wow. Crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, there's you know, only I mean, been uh, yeah, there hasn't been many clean sweeps. No, that's crazy. Yeah, really? On both sides, there hasn't been many clean sweeps. Have I, I ever? Had been... clean... I think I've had one clean sweep, and I, I think don't you had one clean was. sweep. Yeah, oh, wow. it was. Uh, it was a. Oh, you know who it was. It was the transgender uh, porn star that will never air wow. as a clean sweep for you. Was it? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> turns out, turns out, 
while we agreed on everything in the uh, disputed questions, we did not agree on other things later in the episode. <laughs> Apparently, we were offensive. <laughs> Who would have known? But either Why way, not? let's keep it on moving. So, all right, I want to talk. So, like we said on the show, yeah. Keon Smith today, and I mentioned yeah. it in the intro, Keon is, he runs Officially Made, which is a charity organization that he's very much involved in. Uh, one of their big sayings is be the change you want to see in the world. And I think they live by that. If you can go to the website for officially made, because we'll have a link in the description of this episode. And then then that website, you'll see they have a ton of merchandise that all proceeds go back into supporting the charity. They've had a ton of events that have helped the community as far as like, you know, a gift bag or a book bag giveaway face painting with some music. They've done just about everything, man. It's been like it's it's a beautiful thing to see, like all the things that you've been able to do to help build the community. So I want to spend some time on this. What's the deal with officially made? Uh, how did it come about? And and you know what was your uh, inspiration for this? So let's start. How did how did officially made come to be? So made is an actually an acronym for making a difference every day. Oh, um, oh. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> Smack so, me hard and call me Sally. <laughs> so it's it started like me and my cousin was just fooling around with t-shirts. Or so, you know, back in the day, everyone was doing t-shirts. And the first mm-hmm. shirt that I had was actually called. It said uh, "Dream Dreams." And then um, I then I read my second one was was made, and it, it made skyrocketed. It just outshined Dream Dreams. No one even remembered what Dream Dreams was. <laughs> made 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 was. <laughs> may may just went crazy um um yeah uh, yeah uh, may went crazy and um it was it started made i started made and i always wanted to give back because i came from very humble beginnings and um i, I always want to give back and those colors that you see on the site is not by coincidence like the uh the teal and white the teal and white okay. represents um my mother passed away of uh, cervical cancer when i was 11 and my mm-hmm. aunt that raised me she passed in 2010. She passed of lung cancer. So those two colors um, actually represent uh, those two women that uh, was uh, a yeah, huge part of my, my, my upbringing. Yeah. Yeah. So for your loss, pal. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah. So no, that's, that's how it uh, came about. Make yeah. every day. What was it? Making a what? difference. Making a difference Make every a day. Make a difference every day, you every moron. Day. He said or, it two minutes ago. I mean, <laughs> you listen. <laughs> Make a, a difference, difference every, every day. day. You should be make a dumbass every second. That's you. All right. God damn. For all of those watching on our YouTube channel at Working Perspectives Podcast, you can see that Keon is modeling some of the made merch right now. Isn't that right, Key? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is uh, the splash design. As you, hence the design's called Splash with the splash hat. Oh, thank God it's yep. not called Splooge. <laughs> <laughs> Just so yeah, no, uh, that that dude, that stuff looks great, man. You did a great, and you designed that yourself. Um, uh, so the design, uh, I actually come up with the concept, and then I have some people do the uh, the actual design and the artwork and things like that behind it. So yeah, that's the way yeah, you go. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Man. When we when we did merch, I initially came up with the designs, and I sent took it to like a company that did the merch, and they're like, "Look, we don't think you should print this." And I was like, uh, why not? And they're like, because no one will buy it. And I was like, okay. Oh, man. All right, let's oh, make man. let's make some changes. And then they wow. came up with the logo that we uh, have in use today. And I love it. So, but I yeah, nice, you. dude. That's incredible, so, man. So, okay. So, so you made, so, yeah. so you, so you made, <laughs> you made this t-shirt. <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, you made this t-shirt, right? And it's selling like hotcakes, right? And then you were like, look. I don't need all this and I want to give back to the community to help raise me, uh, mm-hmm. which, what is this? Where's this community at? So, so, um, so, so made actually, uh, I had to shut it down for a few years and, um, uh, because it got, it got, it got bigger than me. I didn't know yeah. how it was going to, how it was going to take off. I was just, you know, I had a design. It was four letters and it just said M A D E and underneath it said making a difference every day. And, um, this, this one guy bought a t-shirt or, or two and uh, he owned a construction company he um he wore it, matched it up with his watch and hat and things like that. And he hit me back l- like a week later and said, "Hey, do you sell in bulk? I want to get it for all my guys." I was like, "What the hell? Hell no! I'm selling this out of my trunk, man!" Like, so, <laughs> so, 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 so that guy made me shut down for a while, and I, I, I um, 
I said I wasn't coming back until I was prepared. I had a team website. So I got the website. I, I got the P.O. box. I got its own bank account. I got the you know email and all that stuff. And I uh, revamped and I relaunched in 2019. So it's a good time and, to uh, do it. Yep. 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 So I relaunched in 2019. So it's been good since. And um, and we've been giving back to different communities. Uh, so we giving back to elementary school kids, uh, middle school kids, uh, the homeless, um, the uh men's shelter uh, also a women's shelter and um and it's been good man um everyone has been appreciative and um it's a good feeling man so and um i just wanted to keep uh my my, my folks name alive you know my mother and my my aunt's name uh, alive and uh continue to do good things man dude you're doing incredible things man and that's you know what you're doing is is honestly it's more than most people will ever do in a lifetime so a big salute to you for doing that and sticking with it and you know you should be very proud of yourself and i know that your your mom and your aunt are looking down and they're very proud of what you accomplished, man. And you should be very happy with that. So good for you. It. Of course, Thanks, man. man. Of course. And like I said, in the description of this episode, we'll have a link to the website and we'll have a link to the Instagram. So if you want to follow, and then also there's a place where you can donate and and check out, you know, what they've got going on with officially made. And dude, it's it's an incredible thing you're doing. And hey, so dude, I'll tell you one thing, you can't you can't go wrong supporting the youth, man, because they need it. They need it. They just yeah. need some direction and some help. Yeah. And every little bit helps. And you never know like what you'll do that can change one of these little kids' lives. So that's incredible, man. Very Absolutely. Cool. And a good thing about made is it, anyone can wear it from eight to eighty. You know what I mean? It's making a difference yeah. every day. So it's not yeah. it's not offensive, it's positive, it's a and we take an all-hands-on-deck approach. One hand wash the other, both hands wash the face. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Represent ahead, your Justin. area and, like, show the support of this great organization, plus the shirt's cool. Justin is 1,000% is correct. You should always support your local area and support your, your neighbors and everything like that, and 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 it's and the and the merch is pretty cool, man. It is cool. I mean, even nerds like Justin and I could rock it. Yeah, it I want to do that. Pretty Absolutely. cool, babe. So, yeah. I wanna, yeah, I want to make a North Wales one. I want to start my own. <laughs> North Wales, a, a North difference Wales. every day? Yeah. New Wade, <laughs> New Wade. Uh, but either way, I want to keep it moving, and I want to get to know the man, the myth, the legend that is Keon Smith. So All we're right. going to start from where we start, as always. Uh, Keon, where were you born, and where did you grow up? Wow. So I was born in uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, North Philadelphia and um, 23rd, area. And Di- 23rd and Diamond, man. It was crazy. <laughs> um, 23rd it was, and oh, Diamond? Diamond. It was crazy. That's what I was born in the projects, man. The high rises before they blew, before they blew them up and you know tore them down, man. How so many was... of my buddies that went to Temple did yeah. you try and rob? How many of them? Huh? <laughs> What's going on? 23rd Robbery, and Diamond? Robbery was Golly. About- Robbery wasn't my thing, man, but uh, oh, man. it, it was crazy. You. Some of my guys, man, you know, I, I you know, I know some people, but sure, yeah, sure, it was, sure. it was, it was, it was rough, man. It was, it was, it was rough, man. You can get through that. You can get through anything. But, um, so, <laughs> yeah, brother. So, so I, so I, I relocated. So 23rd and Diamond, that's where, that's when my mother was still born. I did a quick little stint in West Philadelphia, like 58th and Locust, then back to North Philadelphia when my mother passed away. So I went back to nice. just a block down and a block over where, where my aunt raised me. Um, at 22nd in Susquehanna. So I blocked down, block over. And sure. um, then she had to get a bigger house because right. when my mother passed away, she took in five of us. So it was five of us total. And um, she had four of her own. Dang. So, nice. so she got she eventually got a bigger house. And that's where I spent most of my years, which was uh, Eighth and Diamond, which is, you know, Badland right. area. It's pretty crazy down there, too. Badlands. So, Damn. Yes, sir. Home so, yeah, Gabby man, Rosado, I, the legend. So I seen, oh, yeah, I got pictures with Gabe. Uh, yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, he's a good dude. And Danny Garcia. <laughs> yeah. And Bernard Hopkins. I got pictures with all those guys. <laughs> nice. Yeah, man. So, okay. So you're growing up in the Badlands. And, yeah. you know, people from the outside have their, their ideas of what it is living there. But what is it like from someone who actually grew up there? You know? Um, it's um it's definitely survival of the fittest. So okay. you have to have you have to be strong willed in that in, in that area, man, because It'll swallow you up, man. So um, you you mentioned that yeah. there was it was eventually be nine of you in a household. Where did you fall in that ranking? Are you the oldest? Or are you the youngest? Oh man, so um my my cousins that my, my you know my aunt had four kids. They were all older than me. Okay. But um as far as far as my mother's five kids, I got two sisters that are older. So yeah, I'm the middle. Then I have a younger brother and a younger sister. But you're the oldest boy. Yep, oldest boy. So that's well, that means something. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? 
Because yeah. my brother, my brother isn't the oldest, but he's the oldest boy, and that means a bit. Yeah. That's a big deal. So uh, exactly. you're, yeah. you're the oldest boy. So that means even when your older sisters had some trouble, they would have to call you eventually. Exactly. Right? So you had to learn to grow up from a young age then, right? Yeah, I had to put, I had to put, I had to put work and chores and all that before toys, man. At, at a certain point, so oh, yeah. yeah, I was forced. I was forced to kind of grow I'm, up quickly due to the, due yeah. to my background. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have ask a question? How many bathrooms were in this house? <laughs> all right. So the bathroom that was on Twenty Second and Susquehanna, it was just. Uh, it was just it was uh, a row it was, home with with, it was with a row home, one. I think it was a row home with one. Yeah, row home yeah. with one. Okay, row home no with fun. One. When we when we relocated, it was two. <laughs> what two fulls or one and a half? One and a half. Okay, so you had one in a powder room, which thank uh, God. Yeah. But yeah, you had so exactly. then the older your your cousins. What was boys or girls? The older so one. it was so it was two boys and two girls. Okay. So there's yeah. four boys and five girls total in this house. Yeah. So you poor sons of guns had to share a bathroom <laughs> with five five girls and, and your aunt as well. Yep, yeah, exactly. God bless you. My goodness. You must have been like you must have been like automatic in there. Just damn. But look, in and out. But, 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 but now the thing teeth, is get done. It was it, look, hey, man, it was like it was like a gift and a curse though, because growing up I had I had the advantage of knowing women. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so, true. yeah, so true. Yeah, it was did good you ever? Uh, did you Blessing ever get the, the shower coast. alone? I grew up. I had five, five boys, and then uh, a mom and a dad in the house, one bathroom. And when you would mm -hmm. shower in the morning, someone would be using the toilet. You'd be in the shower. Someone would be using the sink, and it would just be a cycle of that the whole time you were in the shower. Yeah, so I like didn't shower alone until I was like fifteen. <laughs> well, the thing Dude. is. Well, it, it was it was rough because when I was when I did the, the stint in West Philadelphia, I was um, you, you, you know Meek Mill's song started from the bottom. <laughs> now, yeah. now we're here. So that house in West Philadelphia, I didn't realize that we were living in an abandoned house until I got older and I ran into somebody that I grew up with, and she was like, "Yo, you guys, did you know that house was abandoned?" I was I was like freaking eight or nine years old. I had no clue, so no, I didn't know. Was the water so, nice. I mean, they couldn't shut the water off, right? Water was off, bro. I was, right. I was, oh. bro. I, I, I told you I had a rough, a rough upbringing, bro. I was Oof. fetching water from a driveway in a gallon jug, bro. Oh man, yeah, yeah, rough, rough, Lee. Man. Dude, you yeah. must have stank. <laughs> yeah. He must yeah, have been listen, one of those listen, so, kids. so imagine, so imagine with no running water, you can't flush the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it, it was yeah. it was terrible, man. It was terrible. Yeah. I almost burned what the house the... down. I almost burned the house down one day because I was following my older sister. She used to light. She used to light a um like a paper towel or a piece of paper and go down into the basement. Man, Is, I tried to, use to follow her. Light? Huh? To use, use it as a light or... to be able to see. Yeah, we had to use the light to be able to see. Yeah, <laughs> so she she uh, like going through a so, cave. Yeah, oh it was God. it was crazy, man. Yeah, it was crazy. So I uh, I tried to that, follow but... her, and I, I lit I lit the kitchen curtain on fire. Like it was like the little <laughs> curtain in the kitchen, and the fucking house was on fire, bro. It was crazy, man. They were like, "Damn, this house is already fucking falling apart. Hang a light on fire!" Golly. Yeah, yeah. This is so our rough, house. Man. It, was, <laughs> it was rough, but uh, but when I moved, <laughs> this is even I, our house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was rough, man. So, but when I moved, uh, you know, things started to get better. Oh, dude, so you so you went from like you went from squatting in an abandoned house with you and four brothers and sisters and your mom to move going to a house with running water and hot water, and you're like, damn, yeah. damn we made it. We're here. You know. So I had, so I, so I, so as you can so as you know, as an adult, I don't complain too much. No, no, that yeah, is the good that. part of that. Yeah. Same thing. Like we had when I was a kid, like there was enough hot water for like a shower and a half, and there yeah. was five of us. Yeah. So like yeah. your choice was shower, but it's yeah. not gonna quick, it's not gonna quick feel showers. Good. Or, Dude, or you, take, you. Or you take the quick or you take the quick bird bath at the sink. Just wash, <laughs> you know. And yeah, that too. Yeah. I was making I was talking something about this. Yeah. So there'd be one kid peeing in the actual toilet, one kid peeing in yeah. the shower, one kid yeah. peeing in the sink downstairs one kid peeing in the <laughs> sub pump and one kid have to be out back being it's crazy dude what i mean it is it is funny to think but yeah. like you know the it, the cold shower is brutal bro like brutal. looking back on it i remember i remember one at one point it. yeah i remember at one point though i got into like really good like i was gotten to better shape we'll say just because like i remember i was like all right 
I got to kind of get a little warm before I go into this thing. Cause we didn't like the house we lived in. We didn't pay just remembers the Markle street house. Yeah. We didn't pay for the hot water from like, like April till November. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> You're like, I don't we were, need it during the win- during the summer. Well, the, the, the dude whose job was to pay, like we all, the, the problem was, is we all took different things, right? Like my job was the Pico bill. So I just made sure that the lights were on. Right. But the son of a bitch who had the hot water job, He's like, yeah, I'll pay it sometimes. And we were like, dude, you need to pay it more because this is brutal. This is but, important. You know, yeah. But either way, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. but no, the hot water was, the hot water was a thing for sure. Yeah, but, we, we, had to, we had to heat up the hot water on like a, a hot, electrical hot plate. That's what he yeah. did. Isn't that what you did, Matt? Yeah. You would like tea kettle it? Yeah. When I was, when I had to shave, I would, so I would, what I would do is, because I used to like to work out in the morning. So I would work out. Right. Then I, when I was going upstairs to go to the shower, I would put water on, I would put water in a, in a tea kettle on the stove to start it. Then I would go upstairs. And the key is when you're taking a cold shower is you want to be under the putt. You want to be under the faucet when you turn the water on, because that's the warmest the water is going to be. You know what I mean? (laughs) So like you want to be under there when the water's on. So I was under the faucet when the water turns on, got hit with that shower real quick with the cold water then run downstairs, grab the tea kettle, pour it in the sink, and then shave. And then you know, I'll tell you, not not a bad time. The hot dude, the 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 smoldering hot like scold your hot water to shave in. It's pretty nice. What would uh, Keon? What would you do with the hot water? Oh, we use the hot water for a bath or something, man. Like we had to we had to wash with that. You would like yeah, fill the we, tub up. We had to fill the tub up or See, try to fill it up a couple a, a, a few times, or we would put it in the uh, like like put a stopper in the in the in the sink in the bathroom yeah. and just wash with the hot water. Ah, okay. yeah, yeah, just wash. Yeah, See, yeah, yeah I would water. never. Yeah, even when the the hot water was gone, I would never get fully in. I would do what like you did with the cold water. Like I would like scoop it and try and like wash was outside. Yeah, the water. exactly. I would, I would never get, get fully, fully in. The cold in. Water either. Yeah. That's crazy. Nope. Dude, I yeah. was fully in. Even in like the cold months, like October, November, I was fully oh, in. It was no. oh, hell no. the summer. No, dude, right. the summer wasn't too bad. You know what yeah, I mean? If like, you were like, you can live with practice. it in the summer. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You could live with it in the summer. It was bearable. But when it got cold, I was like, damn, I hope no one walks in. <laughs> I hope no one's girl walks in because there's some shrinkage going on. You know what I mean? But it was brutal. But what was haunt? So you're in the abandoned house. We had another guy that had a similar situation on the show, Mickey Bats. And he had talked about the bugs being horrendous in oh, yeah. the house he grew up in. Was that a yeah. deal when you were in the abandoned house? Yeah, we had this uh, this dirty, filthy ass. It was like this yellow carpet downstairs. Oh. And it was just a bunch of little hicks and fleas, whatever the f- whatever you want to call oh. them. Oh. Oh, flea, Basically, the outside flyer. moved inside. Flea infested rug. Oh, yeah, man, man, it was horrible. Dang. That's yeah, it was horrible. Well, how long were you in West Philly? How many years? That I can remember? Probably, uh, I don't know. I'd probably, I'd probably say maybe three, four years. So you went from 23rd and Diamond to West Philly for three years and then back to 22nd Susquehanna? Yep. Okay. So when you were yep. 23rd and Diamond, you're living in a row home. Then, 20, well, 20, 23rd and Diamond was the high rises. Okay, and, and you, you got to remember this is the this is the you know early eighties the you know crack yeah. epidemic man you yeah. know so it's it's wild man it's yeah. it's crazy so Take yeah the high the rises and um then uh, my my family moved to I remember we get I remember that house getting that that house getting robbed too in the uh, in the high rises then we moved to uh, West Philly. And then we moved to 22nd and Susquehanna. Are you going to school at this time? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I actually won a bike in elementary school for perfect attendance. <laughs> is it because you got, is it because they got day. food at school? Huh? Oh, hell yeah. That was the best part of the day. food at school, right? That was the best part of the day, man. Shit. you going in like, oh, man, what do they got today? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's tough, dude. Yeah. But yeah. when you're, so also, wait. What so kind of bike was it? For... Do you remember? Sorry. You said what? What kind of bike was it? Do you remember? Oh yeah, it was like a little huffy. Nice. Did you get stolen? <laughs> no, nah, I didn't get stolen. Yeah. Did you <laughs> yeah. when you when you were in the West Philly house? So that means you have to live there through the winter months too. Yep. Golly, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we had we had the kerosene here. Yeah. Dang. So you're that's sipping, back when winters were cold. Gas out of car. Oh, bro, dude. That's yeah. back when you had the like storms. today. <laughs> Three feet of snow in the in the winter, man. Yeah, You're it was rough. Man. Real winners. Damn. Yeah, it was definitely it was definitely rough. That's some cold nights. So okay. 
So you went, so then, dude, when you went back to, you know, when you're back living with your aunt, then you're living it up. Things are going a lot better. And you're, are you really like in your mind, you're thinking to yourself like, look, I got to stay in school. I got to get right. I don't want to end up on, you know, on a corner here or doing this there or whatever. And like really focusing yourself. Well, I was still, I was still young at the time, man. I was, uh, you know, well, when my mom passed, I was, uh, well, so I, we was at my aunt's house and because of the room situation and not, not having enough room, I moved with my grandmother for a short stint. My grandmother passed six months after my mom did. Golly. So my, 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 my mom passed. I moved with my aunt. Then we moved to my grandma's for a short stint because of the room, the, you know, not enough space yeah, situation. Not enough space. Yeah. So we moved there and uh, my grandmother passed six months after my mother did. Jeez. So I moved back Jeez. to my aunt's house. On and she's years. like, all right, I need, an, I need more room. And she moved you down to where you at least had a bathroom and a half. And then, a Street, A Street. That's you, where it all, that's where that's where I came. That's where I became came into a man, man. Man. So then you're living down there, dude. I'll tell you, your aunt must be a strong woman. Yeah, yeah. man. She 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 what she is and she she was man. What she what was, uh was there generation. any? So you talk about your mom, your grandma, and your aunt. Were there any male role models around? So my aunt, my. My aunt had uh, uh, who we call Pop Pop. So she was, um, I don't know if they was, I don't know, I don't think they were legally married. So yeah, yeah, he was around, but he was an army vet. So yeah, okay. he, so he, he wasn't working, but um, but uh, he was around, but he, he was cool. Not much of a, a real father figure. So, but uh, but no, no, not really, man. No, not really. That's tough. My my father oh. um, never never knew him. Don't know who he is to this day. I asked my yeah. aunt, you know, when, you know, when you know, I asked her about him. She said she she told me that she thinks she knows who my father is or was. She said that you know her and her her and her sister, you know, my mom used to hang out. And she said I I really resemble this guy that my mother was seeing at the bar. So. She said that my father, my father used to work at this bar back in the day in the seventies uh, or eighties, whatever the case may be. So she said, I really resemble this guy. And I said, so what happened? She was, like, she was like, it was never together. They just, you know, they were just, they just yeah, hooked up. Fooling with around. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 That's so, how Justin did. came around too. He never met his dad either. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Pretty similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. except his dad ended up being beaten to death in an alley or something right yeah, something like yeah that. she uh she knew she was pregnant and she went to wow. go tell him and when she went to go tell him like he was like high as shit and she mm. was like i ain't gonna tell him mm. gotcha gotcha and then, gotcha and then things yeah. happen so all right so hey you, you never know you guys could have the same dad just we could be brothers possibly <laughs> could be brothers mine's a out there. pudgy white guy from abington though i don't think that you're I saw some pudgy white guy in my pictures man <laughs> no i'm just playing i'm just playing <laughs> so okay That's so cute, let, let's keep it moving let's keep it so you're growing up now like you're living with your aunt in a packed house with cousins and you have some older cousins that are boys did you really look up to your older male cousins at this time no um no. so okay. <laughs> so one of them moved out shortly after he went to he was in he went he went to job corps um and um and then my other cousin he was uh he was so he was in he was in, he was in the streets like you know in, you know in and out of the streets you know he was you know okay. doing this hustling thing and stuff like Still that is? so no no that was ages I'll ago tell you, <laughs> one thing i'll say is that you know being in those situations and being around those people how good are you at smelling the fucking bullshit right uh, like dude yeah. right i got my ma- like, i got my i got i got my doctorate in smelling <laughs> bullshit bro dude how about it man you're around that shit long enough. You're like, bro, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, honestly, I sniff, dude, I can sniff bullshit from a mile away, man. Yeah, I've learned. My thing is though, like, I'll sniff the bullshit, but I'll just let, like, unless they're trying to like get over on me, then I'll just let them do do their bullshit. I could care less, yeah. right? But yeah. if they're trying to get over on me, it's like, listen, motherfucker, I know the game you're playing, so shut the. F-, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. But other than that, it's like, god damn, dude. There's some people that they think everybody's a mark, and you're like, bro. Get the fuck out of here. But whatever. But that's something you learn growing up in those areas. So you're growing so, up, yeah, right? But, and you said yeah, you yeah. became a man the, at 8th Street. Street. So what's going on? What what do you, what kind of things were you doing that you're like became a man? So 8th Street, man, that was that was that was like, you know, the Badlands area, man. That was uh we with survival of the fittest there. So uh so I'm getting older, man. I'm like 15, you know, and, and was it uh, Badlands the, the, when you moved in there? Hell yeah. <laughs> okay i'm just saying i don't know how long it's been bad i'm gonna give you a story okay. of a friend of mine this is how i met a friend of mine right 
the growing up. So I come out, I'm, I, 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 this house, I live three doors away from the corner. And um, this dude, <laughs> this dude is <laughs> my man C. I call him C. His name is his name, his name Charlie, right? So this dude is kicking the phone booth, getting quarters out the phone booth. He's just kicking it. And <laughs> look, look, mind you, like this dude is like 4'11". He's like a short dude, man. So he's like <laughs> kicking his phone booth, man. And like, Quarters are coming out, so I'm like, so I end up helping them. I'm just kicking the phone. Hey, so we got a free quarter machine here. All right, let's go. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, is, is anything coming out? He's like, he's like, he's like, sometimes. So I start helping him, helping him kick the phone booth. So I'm like, <laughs> so I'm kicking the phone booth with him. So we ended up becoming friends, man. So that was that was that was a that was a memory I never forget, man. So Still so see, to this day. The phone booth. But um, so growing up, man, every everybody everybody's. You know, on the corner hanging out, and you see the older guys. You know, you see the older guys that are, you know, that are hustling, they looking fly, man. You know, they got on, you know, they yeah. got on this and that, and yeah. I'm like, okay, okay, you know, they you know who the hustlers, you know, at, uh, you know who the hustlers are, you Burlington know who the players are. Factory, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't no Burlington Co. Factory. <laughs> 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 These dudes wearing like this is this is back in the day where they were in the guest jeans and the polo, oh, Fila's and, and Tommy Hilfiger. Oh yeah, yeah man. The yeah, real stuff, man. baby. Yep, yep. So I think I started. I think I started hustling, man, when I was like 15, bro. So I, I met this guy. Actually, this guy. He was he, he he was dating my sister, and this dude. He was like he was he he was the, he was the big dog around the way. I'll say that. Okay. I don't want I don't want to I don't want to incriminate nobody. I think he might be. I might think, I think he might be locked up right now. But um, so he was he was the big dog around the way. So was he an old head or was he your age? Yeah, yeah he was an old head, man. He was an old head, mm -hmm. man. So. All right, keep going. So my old my oldest sister is what? Um, she's uh like four years older than I am. So okay. to me, he, dude, to me, big big difference at that age. Big yeah, if you're exactly you're twelve, they're sixteen. Big exactly. Difference. So so yeah, he was um. So if I'm fifteen, you know, he's like nineteen, or twenty, yep. or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Well, might be he might have been older than my sister. I, I just know he was. He, you know, he's dating, starting dating to get. Sister. He's starting to getting into stuff and driving and doing all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. I ended up driving this dude Lexus Coupe and all that, man. I think I was like sixteen. <laughs> so, so I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting much. You know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm a, I'm a street pharmacist at the time. So, you know, right, I'm doing, right. I'm doing my thing, going to school. You know, still going to school. Yeah. And, um, and you just, you just see and hear a little bit of everything. Man. I didn't see people get robbed. I didn't see people get shot at a dice game. I didn't see the cops shoot my man Zach in the head. Like it's 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 definitely survival of the fittest, man. And um, like I got robbed in broad daylight. This dude, I, this gun looked big as hell. My neighborhood, know. dude. It, 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 I don't know. I don't know where this dude was from, but I knew something was okay. going on. Yo, I, broad daylight. I don't know. This gun looked big as shit, man. It like this dude had a forty-five revolver or something, man. Like that Dang. shit looked like Dirty it was hair. this long back in the day. <laughs> so, uh, so this dude, and I'm waiting for. So I'm done with my packages and everything. So I got all money in my pocket waiting to re-up. Uh, so I'm waiting for this dude. So, you know, waiting for my connect so I can buy, you know, buy, buy some more stuff, man. So right. this dude. Some this more dude, pharmacy stuff. Yeah, some more pharmacy stuff. This, this yeah. dude in the middle of my block in broad daylight, bro. I'm like 16, 17. He said, don't move. And I'm, I'm in the street because I, 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 I'm walking on the sidewalk and they're walking towards me. So I walk uh -huh. in the street. And he come in the street, and that's when he pull out. Don't, <laughs> don't move. And the dude that he was with is the one that went in my pockets, took everything out. I just walked off after that. Like, damn. I mean, you're yeah. you're happy to have your life after that. Were you done? Yeah, were man. you done with the game after that? No, nah, hell no. So, no, no. <laughs> so oh, money man. was too good. So, yeah, I had an episode where this is when they actually they still made glass bottles. Remember the bottle Pepsi's and stuff back in the day? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, they still make glass bottles, bottled snapples and stuff like that. So, okay. yeah. So these Remember guys, Sobe, Sobe bottles. Yeah, man. So um, okay. there was there was there was a situation where these guys was throwing bottles in the uh, in the poppy store, you know, and in, in the bodega on the corner. They just throwing bottles, you know, messing with those dudes. I'm on the corner with my cousin, waiting for my cheesesteak. I have nothing to do with it, but I'm laughing because they arguing with the dude, with the guys in the store. Yeah. The guy came out shooting. Boom! 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 I feel some hot shit on my side. I got a hole in my shirt. I'm bleeding. Like, what the? F so I get grazed by this bullet. I run in the house. I'm like, yo, I'm God, I got hit. I got hit. Luckily, I got, I, it was just a graze. I didn't, it didn't go through. But man, I still got the scar on my back till this day. Yeah, so I got lucky. Lee. 
I got I got and lucky, that, man. That the and you weren't even do it. You were just hanging on the corner. I'm waiting, on, waiting I'm for waiting a cheesesteak. Cheese steak. Yeah, man. I'm like, yo, this Golly. is. Yeah, Lee. He come out blasting. So I go in the house and. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. So, um, you know, they, you know, my aunt had the, you know, the home remedies, and she patched me up with the home remedies and all that good stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but yeah, man, it was crazy. What can I ask this? And if you don't want to answer this, Keon, you don't have to, right? Yeah, go ahead. But you, you're, you know, you grew up in the Badlands, and you did the street pharmaceuticals and all that stuff. What is your opinion on the? Do you have an opinion on the police or the Philadelphia police? Do I have an opinion on the on the police? Um. As of now or then? <laughs> I mean, both, I, I guess. What was your opinion then and what is your opinion now? I mean, I know as a homeowner, your opinion might change, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what your opinion is because you've yeah. had different, you know, it's it's on, like, yeah. to be honest, you've had a different scenarios than I have. Yeah. Um. So you have situations where there's an abuse of power. Um. You have, you have some assholes and some people that are not. Right. Uh, but. Those that are not assholes, if you're not speaking up about the asshole that you're with and you allow them to abuse his power, then you're just as bad. Right. But they have this, you know, this 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 blue brother, brotherhood where right. nothing not ma nothing matters. You know, it, no one holds it. Uh, you know, they don't hold each other accountable. So that's where it gets. That's yeah. where the lines get crossed and it gets a little fucked up because you want to respect the ones that, you know, do what they do respectively. And, you know, but you have the one that's next to him that's doing crooked right. shit. But this guy doesn't say nothing about it so it's like are you how good are you really you know so yeah back, back yeah. then man there was a That's black cop point. with blue contacts bro there was this dude was darker than me had blue contacts and every time he saw me i i i, I, I could be doing nothing bro like i i you know, i live three doors away from the corner so uh -huh. and there's a there was a corner store so i'll you know this dude would pull up and uh this dude pulled around and said get get the fuck off the corner next time i see you i'm gonna put my foot in your ass didn't see me doing anything selling nothing right. no hand-to-hand -hand right. transactions that's just what he spoke i walked and sat on my step right this dude came over there and said take a walk i said i live here <laughs> so like so he was so you know i ended i ended up with the upper hand then but you know he just looked yeah. like a jackass because i went in the house but yeah you just have dudes that just do shit like just for no particular reason at all man. yeah they think i mean i feel like a lot of the times in a scenario like that it's the guy he thinks he has to behave that way mm -hmm. in, or, like because of the yep. reputation of the area that you're in where exactly. like, if he if he had human decency Right mm -hmm. now, to be honest, though, that mm -hmm. that's, you know, it's a two way street because mm -hmm. you have to like there's a give respect to get respect kind of thing where mm -hmm. if he went down there and he was being decent, he was being kind. People try to take yep. him for a ride. You know, ah, what I mean? no, no, not necessarily. Those are the guys that you cool with. You dap, you dap them up. Those are the cops that you dap up. You respect them. So now nah, the ones that abuse power, those are the ones you find in an empty lot somewhere. <laughs> are you? Oh, OK. So. You're saying then, but there, okay, but there's no one on the criminal side that would like if the guy is just he's not like trying to hamstring anybody and he's just letting people live their life. And if he doesn't catch you with something, he doesn't catch you with something kind of thing. You're not trying to take that guy for a ride. You're not trying to say, or you're not trying to get one over on that guy. Right. So yeah, the dude, the dude that keep it real with you. We had a couple of those. He's like, yo, dude, let just do me a favor. Just you know, get off the corner. You know, take a walk down the street for me. You know, stuff like that, man. Yeah. But when he's like, look, when I'm he, he says, like, when I'm around, just don't do it. He's like, I know you're going to do it, but just don't do it when I'm around. This Got dude, it. it's, that dude, that dude that just says, yo, guys, I know you're just hanging out, you know, you know, just shooting the shit. But do me a favor. Just, you know, look at, you know, kind of yeah. let's disperse this group. It can be like 10, 15 of us on the corner. So it kind of looks bad. And right. Actually, he could be looking out for us in that situation. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. So he's like, you know, just kind of, you know, take a walk, and then we'll walk and you know go to the playground. You know, playground was down the street. We played ball every day, all day. Yeah. So you know, yeah. so yeah, when man. You're, but when those you're dudes that with... walk up and those dudes that walk up and start being belligerent and shit like that, those are the ones yeah. you. Yeah. They end up in the lot. You're saying, right? Yeah, man. Okay. What is your school situation like at this point? If you're doing the street pharmaceuticals, are you still going to school every day? Or yep. no. Okay. Yep. And does the food have a lot to do with that? Ah, uh, not at this time. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting a couple dollars. You, oh, you're so you're making money at school. Well, with my with my pharmacy business outside of school. Okay. Did you have a hustle <laughs> in school? Uh not too much. Not no. too much because I didn't want it to just fool the my normal academic. whatever dice game kind of BS kind it of stuff. A little bit of a little bit of marijuana, but that was all. Right. Right. That's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
And you're not even making on that. You're just covering what you're what you're taking in, right? Well, no, like you're just smoking no. for free. Um, actually, I actually, actually didn't smoke, man. Actually, oh, it was just yeah. I didn't, I, didn't even, I didn't even. I didn't even. I didn't even smoke that. Well, let me let me put it like this. I'll say I smoked for like six months and stopped. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Too. Like I wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't for me. Like I didn't. I didn't. I didn't indulge like that. I wasn't. You know, all the way locked in. But um, but everybody else did. <laughs> so. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, it was um, it was cool. It was cool. All right. So then you're going through school, and when was the point? Was there a breaking point that you said, "All right, I'm done with this street shit, and yeah. I want to get clean, go clean"? Yeah. Like what happened? Yeah, man, it was a couple things actually. I was um, <laughs> the second time I got robbed in broad daylight, the guy just took my hat. It was weird. I had like the fighting Irish hat on, where with the with the with the with the with the, with the damn leprechaun on the front. Yeah, yeah. Notre Dame. And, yeah up. and he took my he was like he was like you he was like he took my head off he said yeah that's you you robbed my sister stay right there he went around the corner and i'm staying right there but he never came back it was fucking weird why man. did you <laughs> stay there he took the hell no, was, he was like i'm like like he had a gun bro like he they're like stay right there i'm like he never came back i'm like okay it's just a hat, bro. Like, really? That's but, funny. Uh, what if he so, like really wanted that hat and he's yeah, like, look, yo, that I'm was, get this yo, hat. That was, that was the weirdest hold up robbery situation I've ever had, bro. That was it yeah. was weird, man. And then um um what what really made me uh uh cut out of it, man, it was uh so I had I bought a car. Of course I didn't have my driver's license, so my car I bought the car and um it had I had the face out radio, the flip out radio and everything, oh, man. Oh yeah. I had, a, I had a Chevy citation, bro, with the hatchback. Remember those? I had a Chevy citation, bro. The you're a walking violation at that point, baby. Yeah. The Chevy citation. Chevy citation. <laughs> so um yeah, yeah. So um somebody stole my car, man. I drove to school. I came out and I, you know, I know I parked on the back block. I was going to William Penn, man. I went to William Penn High School in North Philly, man, across okay. from the historical Freedom Theater and the Blue Horizon, right? Oh, so yeah. I parked on the small block. And you ever you ever come out and you you know you know where you parked your car and it's not there? He's like, Well, maybe I parked yeah. on the other side. You walk on the other side and yeah. like, well, it's not here. Yo, man, I swear I walked around two, three different blocks and my car was gone, man. And they, like oh, that my car was still. Man. So that was the first time I, I thought about, you know, you know, leaving the streets alone. I was like, all right, I'm spending money. I'm losing money. Like, this, this ain't worth it, man. I can't even call. I can't even call the cops and say they stole my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to be like, they're gonna be like, how you buy this? Uh, I have no driver's license, no insurance. So. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, There's a car that, that I'm aware I... of that is gone. Right, right. It's not my car, but it's like a car I'm interested in <laughs> to get back. I don't know. Never mind. I'm just this this is just a helpful tip. Just a helpful tip. <laughs> if you but, find uh, it, can you just call me and tell me where were, it is? Were you doing any so okay. So, so I hated, like I right. hated losing so I hated losing money, bro. I was yeah. always one of those guys that stayed hustling and a lot of the other guys went out partying, went to see little Kim and Foxy Brown and all that. But I yeah, was always the guy that stayed hustling, man. I I hated losing money, so that that killed me when I got my car taken, so or stolen. Okay, so all yeah. right, so you're like, so that kind of put the the you yeah. know the the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. So well, then... that was the, that was the first time. So I, I quit I quit the streets shortly after. Where I, I saw these kids, right? Um, saw these kids. They they had come to the store, and I see them, you know, looking a little, you know, a little raggedy, a little, you know, holes in their shoes and stuff like that. Now I knew their mom. I knew she was, you know, a crackhead in the area, right? Yeah. So, okay, so you're in the streets, and you, so these two kids walk up, they're kind of raggedy, and you yeah. knew their mom was on the stuff. What was going yeah. on? So, later on, I seen her, and she was selling, like, a, a Sega Genesis, or one of the, one of the, one of the old joints, uh, or, or the Nintendo or something, man. Yeah. Uh, and I just, and, and, and it just hit me, like, I just saw the kids, like, yeah, going to the store with, like, chains, trying to get, like, penny candy, and, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Started. So I'm like, so yeah, so I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't buy the game, but I knew somebody else would. Yeah. So I didn't buy the game, man. So, I, you know, I was like, nah, I don't need it. I'm good. And uh, that that hit me like, yo, she's, they out here struggling. And she, I feel like, you yeah. know, I was taken away from, yeah, yeah it was, it was, it was crazy. That, was that, I, that kid's Sega. Yeah, man. I'm like, yo, she, she, she really don't care, man. This is like killing her. Yeah. So I'm like. And you I'm also, like, did you, in a way, did you know that kid's pain? Yeah. Yeah, man, because I've you know I've been there with the whole homeless situation, right. man. Like, right. like trying to find out what I'm what I'm eating the next day. So, 
I just had an epiphany or something that day, man. And then yeah, it was so I was so I was you, hustling from the time I was 15 till I was about 21. Damn. So if we compared your life to the wire, you started out as Dookie, then you went into Michael, and then you didn't turn into Omar, you went more as like a Marlo Stanfield, and then you just left. You said, I'm done. And then you ended as a bubbles. You quit the game entirely. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say bubbles, man. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't end well for bubbles. Bubbles really. No, nah, nah, nothing. Bubbles so, was a crackhead. Oh, so, yeah, all right. Maybe you weren't a bubble. So um, so I was um so yeah, I quit the game entirely at 21. But even at 21, I was still like, you know, like 1920. I was that's when I was going to community college. I was boxing, you know, and stuff like that. So you know, okay. I was still like it. I was like, well, one foot in, one foot out type of deal. All right. So we are coming towards the top of time. Like I said, Justin, I would love to have you back. You'd be willing to come back on. Uh, but before Absolutely. we leave, I do have one last question I want to ask you. Right. So, you you know, we talked about it at the top of the show. Uh, uh, made officially made is the website. We'll have a link in the description of this episode for the website and Instagram where you can follow yes, officially made. Um, you know, you talked about your time in the streets and your time in the pharmaceuticals. And you talked about how that the young, you know, the lady with the Sega Genesis cartridge and the and the and the young family affected you as well as your time in West Philly living in an abandoned home. Do you ever I mean, does this made thing and giving back to your community, this part of it come with some guilt that you have from like your time in the streets and your time in the badlands? Is there any guilt there or is it more just you've seen like the the dregs and, and the worst of the worst and you don't want anyone to live through what you have to live through? Um, part of it, part of it. Um, so, you know, um, you know, knowing I did, knowing what I did as far as like, uh, with the pharmaceutical, uh, business and how I grew up, um, I can relate to those that struggle the same way I did. Right. And, okay. and, you know, growing up, like you felt like no one heard you, mm -hmm. no one saw you, you felt like no one cared. So I know what that's like. And I want to kind of change that narrative. Do you ever think too, like that you're, you know, you're right where it's like the the feeling unseen and unheard, right? That's a real thing. And I'm not trying to take away from that. But do you think that that should limit you from trying to to better yourself and use that as like, so? because I feel like sometimes people use that as an excuse as why they're not where they want to be is because, oh, no one sees me, no one hears me kind of thing where it's like, well, you know, sometimes you just have to work harder to get out of the situation that you're in, right? And that yeah. people get like, do you think that that's a thing or am I wrong for saying that? Um, with my, with my, with my, with my experience, um, each individual situation is different because, okay. uh, because, um, you know, I'm a writer and producer of film as well. So yeah. I wrote a script called full circle and not to get off topic really quickly, but, no, um, no. Keep, and, keep, I like it. Keep going. And, um, uh, and it was, it was based on, it was supposed to be based on, uh, true events. Um, so I, I, I interviewed uh, homeless people and formerly homeless people. So, okay. you know, they gave me their stories and um, not all of them are um, are just bums just sitting on uh, sitting on their hands and not doing anything. Uh, yeah. Something transpired. Uh, sometimes it's a, a medical problem. Sometimes it's a, a mental problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's drug abuse. And um, and like it's, it's a case by case basis. And yeah. you do have some on, uh, you know, some occasions where they just won't get off their behind and do anything because if you got two two arms and two working legs, and you know your mind is right, you're standing out you're standing out here asking for change, then you yeah. could be doing some work for it, you know. Yeah. So, but uh, so I, I see I see both sides. I I I would agree with that. Is that it is situational, right? <laughs> sometimes it's a mental roadblock. Sometimes it's a physical roadblock. I understand that. But yeah. like you're saying, if you have the capability to be, I mean, it, you know, to be doing stuff, like mm -hmm. I'll tell you. I've met some addicts before and there's some addicts to get their fix. Them sons mm -hmm. and bitches will do some work, bro. And exactly. they'll come up with some clever things and they'll figure mm -hmm. some stuff out to get their fix. So yeah. and like, you think like you have the ability to do this and figure all this out. You do have the ability to better mm -hmm. your situation. And I think that goes across mm -hmm. the board, whether you're in poverty because of drugs or in poverty because of the station you're in or whatever it is. Right. That's I, like, yeah, yeah. like right. that's, that's the thing like there you some people do have the power 
to better their situation and choose not to. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I interviewed this one guy really quickly. I interviewed this yeah. one guy that was formerly homeless or still homeless. He's getting back on his feet. He was getting back on his feet when I did that, when I wrote the script. This dude used to work on Wall Street and he's and he's so stuck in his ways, right? Like even being homeless uh, and getting clothes and stuff from like the Goodwill and thrift shops, he yeah. still only wears slacks and a button up shirt. Like I met this guy on the streets and he still only wears slacks and a button up shirt bro like it was it was crazy i was like wow so and uh they have they you still have a sense of go. pride about them yeah they still have a sense of pride about themselves it was a guy that um you, they, they, your, your, your homeless people of, of yesterday is not those of today you won't see them walking around pushing a shopping cart like they hide their clothes and bags and stuff under a bridge and things like that like it's so many it's so many different stories i've heard like they'll they'll go into a public bathroom like a mcdonald's or a hospital and wash yeah. they'll wash and change clothes come back out yeah. and they, they could be walking right next to you you never know it wow i mean yeah, yeah it's you know yeah. it's a crazy world we're living in man that's yeah. the truth that is this true. one guy knew where this one guy knew where to get food each day of the week monday he went here <laughs> tuesday he went there thursday he went there friday he went there it was crazy man it's so crazy he, he so like he had broken it down to like he he knew where to go and everything like yep. that and like the different you know di different ways to get over and different yeah wow I mean, yeah. kind of impressive yeah, in a way, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Keon, we are coming towards the top of time. Uh, before we get yeah. out of here, though, I want Justin to have a chance to ask you some questions. Justin, go ahead. What do you got? What's your favorite sports league between NFL, NBA, MLB, or NHL? Oh, excellent question. If you had to I pick gotta one. I, I got to go NBA. So NBA, you have to remove one team from the league. Which team do you pick? Remove one team from the league. Which one do I pick? Wow. That's a great wow, question. Also. Um, I'm going to get rid of the Trail, uh, Portland Trailblazers. Yeah. No one needs it. Portland? Yeah. Dame is no longer there. You want to bring yeah. back uh, the, the Supersonics? Seattle Supersonics? Uh, the Supersonics turned into the Oklahoma City Thunder. I know, but I know, like but... I'm saying, there uh, there's rumors they're gonna try and bring them back, but like you want to yeah, bring back this... Camp. if we could delete the Trailblazers, you want the Super Shout out that left shrimp, oh, that left shrimp. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Sean Kemp and Gary Payton. Yeah, if you could bring them back, I'm, I'm all for it. The love, baby, Justin. Great question. Uh, my answers would be if you're curious. Uh, I would love NFL is my number one. Right? Who would you delete in the NFL? So the thing is, my heart obviously says I'd get rid of the Cowboys, but <laughs> yes. I don't I, I don't <laughs> want to get rid of them because I love to hate them, right? There you go. Like there I you don't want to get rid of them. I love to hate them. I would like to get rid of the Redskins, though. So because they just Redskins. Suck. Well, they already yeah, got rid of themselves. They're now the commanders. So okay, I would like to get rid of the commanders <laughs> just because they're just annoying. Like they suck all the time, but they still beat <laughs> us once a year. Like they suck. They're awful. <laughs> They're garbage. Even though the yeah. quarterback they got now is a good look, he's a good quarterback. I like him. Howell or whatever. Hugh Sam Howell. Sam yeah. Howell. Yeah. He's a good. He's a, he's a good. He, he plays, man. He's a good player. Did they, did they ahead, trade Justin. him? Yeah. No. Sam Howell is uh gone. And who did they pick up? Uh. No, they didn't. Yeah, didn't they? Oh God, they just are so stupid. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. are so fucking yeah, stupid. They, they're not he doing was well. So fucking good, dude. He is a good quarterback, man. He was he's okay. gonna do well, dude. In the situation he had, he did very well, and he's gonna do a lot better wherever he goes. But oh, I, was I was talking to somebody about uh, cross like sport trades, so like we could trade Hassan Reddick to like San Diego for a closing pitcher for the Phillies. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in that concept, like you could trade like a Philadelphia as a unit could trade uh -huh. for different sports. Uh -huh. Oh man, that's crazy. Hassan many, that, that, that'll be too like many that, moving yeah. parts. <laughs> yeah. Too many moving parts on that one, man. I like that idea, though. I have plenty more, though, for when you return. Okay. All right. Thank cool, you, cool. Justin. Excellent job. Excellent. So, all right, Thanks. we are coming towards the top of time. So before we get out of here, uh, Keon, thank you again for being on. Is there anything you would like to say to your family and friends before we get out of here? Hey, I want to thank you, Matt. I want to thank J-Dub as well. And I want to thank uh, all your viewers and, of course, all of my supporters, family and friends. I appreciate you. Can't do it without you. Keep, make, keep, keep, making, a, keep making a difference every day. Hashtag Make a difference man. every day. Love it. Every day. Nice. You, when you, once you get a shirt, Matt, uh, you'll become oh, a made man. I'm you'll done. become a made man once you get a shirt. <laughs> yes, sir. It. Nice. That's a great one. Because, dude, that's yeah. a great slogan for a commercial. Become a made man. 
Yes, yeah, sir. I like that. Nice, dude. Hey, <laughs> I'm, dude, I'm down. I'm down, dude. And like I said, in the description of this episode, we'll have a link to the website. We'll have a link to the social media. So any anyone that's interested in following or seeing what Maid's got going on, I highly recommend, even if you don't want to donate, just see what they got going on. It's a great organization, and it's a great thing that they're doing, and it's always good to give back. We need to continue to give back. It's people like Keon that are willing to help and support the give back that are making our world and our community a better place. And these are the kind of things that you need to do. So very good. Justin, what do you got? Underscore officially dot made underscore at Instagram.com. That's where you find it. Check it out. Have a good time. Yeah. Link in the description of this episode. Anything else, Justin? Uh, you know, just be good. Behave yourself. Stay out of trouble. I fell over a wheelbarrow. Uh, I do medium rare. Same. Keon. I could do medium. But like it's risky. I like medium rare. I don't want it overcooked. Keon. I do. I do no pink. I don't like my steak bleeding. Yeah. See, that's the thing. So you're like, going like a mid well. Yeah. Mid-well. Like not not well done. You know, but I, but I like it. You don't. No you don't pink. want a hockey puck, but you want it cooked through. Right. Like okay. I like it. Like well I like it. No pink. Yeah, because no sometimes pink. medium rare is too rare for me, and sometimes medium exactly. is too cooked for me. So, like, it is a... So, you like a medium rare if plus? If I'm at a really nice place, yep. I go medium rare, because I trust it, and I know the meat's good. If I'm at a eh, place, I go medium. I usually don't get meat at a eh, place. Meat or seafood at a meh place. <laughs> I, mean, I don't order seafood unless I'm near the sea. Yeah. I'm going to do that unless I'm in New Jersey. If I'm not a 30-minute drive from the ocean, no thank you. (laughs) Made that mistake, huh? (laughs) That Costco Uh salmon got you, did it? (laughs) Yeah, turns out the uh, oysters in Lansdale are not that fresh. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Nice. Well, speaking of sad oysters in Lansdale, this has been another episode of the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle. He's Jade up Justin Richardson, and our guest today is the one only Keon Smith. In case you're wondering, you can find all our stuff and all our content on all podcast platforms and YouTube at Work and Perspectives Podcast. He also on Instagram at Work and Perspectives Podcast. You can join us on Twitter and TikTok at Working P Pod. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email us at workingperspectives at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe so we keep bringing you this sweet, sweet content. Thanks for listening, and have a great weekend. Thanks. See you.